Hello everybody, today we will be going over a curved surface area and derivatives problem at the IB math studies level. And so the problem gives us that we have a cylinder with radius r and height h as it is shown in the diagram, right? Radius being here and height being here. And so when you find the sum of r, I mean sorry, they give us the sum of r and h for the cylinder is 12 centimeters. So we go ahead and write that because you never know if you're going to need it. Although if they give it to you, you probably will. So we just leave it here on the side. And we go on to the problem. So part A asks us to write down an equation for the area A of the curved surface in terms of R. And so because they are asking for the curved surface in a specific manner, that means that when we write the area of the cylinder, we're going to leave out both circles, right? Because right now I've got a circle on top, a circle on bottom, and the whole curved surface that goes around the cylinder. And so we're going to leave out the circles and just write down the area of the curved surface. Does this make sense? This, the, um, the circles on top and bottom are not part of the curved surface. And so of course, nobody knows this by memory. So we go to a trusty rusty formula booklet and we find that for the curved surface of a cylinder, its area is going to be two pi r h. Now, we're not done quite yet because they are asking us to write it in terms of r. And so what the heck does it mean when it asks us to write in terms of r? It means that when we have a equals blah 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 like just it means that when when, he, when we have a equals something that something has to have only r as a variable and so we have to ask ourselves in 2 pi r h what is my what are my variables and so we know that 2 is a constant because 2 is always going to be 2 we know that pi is also a constant because it's 3.1 for 1 blah 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 but we do not know r and we do not know h. And so we need to get rid of this h and put h in terms of r so that the whole thing only has r's. And that would be writing in terms of r. Okay, so in terms of r means that my only variable is r. And so I can write 2 pi r, and now I need to turn the h into r. <laughs> And so we go back and remember what the problem gave us in the first place. We have r plus h equals 12. And just moving some stuff around here, if I do minus r on both sides, I end up with h equals 12 minus r. And so notice that now this h, one way or another, kind of like disappears and it turns into an r, right? And so I plug this in over here and I end up with 12 minus r like that. And this is actually enough in the mark scheme to get full credit, but I think it's worth it to um to like develop it a little bit. And so I'm gonna multiply both terms. So if I do two pi r times twelve, I'm gonna get twenty four pi r. And if I do two pi r times minus r, I end up with minus two pi r squared. And so all I really did there was distribute the 2 pi r times 12 and the 2 pi r times minus r. And so that would be for part A. And so now for part B, we have to, we need to find dA over dr. Okay. And so what the heck is this even saying? Um, what this is saying is that in the function of dA, we need to do the derivative of dr. So, for example, if I have uh, y equals x squared, and I am asking for dy dx, the derivative of dy with respect to dx, this here would look like this. y equals 2x, right? My y which is the one on top, is going to remain unchanged. 
and my x is going to be the one that's going to be tampered with and essentially derivative <laughs> or however the heck you say it and so here i know that my a has to remain unchanged and that my r has to be played around with and so i have two r's i have the r that's over here and the r that is over here and so if i do the derivative of the first term i know that there's a hidden one over here right my r is to the power of one and so if i do one times 24 nothing's going to happen and my r is just going to disappear and so for the first term i end up with simply 24 pi because my r is going to turn into r to the power of zero and r to the power of zero is simply one and for my second term i know that there's a two as an exponent for my r so my two is going to multiply with whatever it's in front so two times two is going to be four pi r to the power of 1, because my exponent has to be subtracted by one value. Um, what I just described now is also in the formula booklet, but the intuitive way, which I think is what really matters, is that, hey, the exponent, you're going to bring it down and multiply, and then you're just going to subtract it by 1, right? And so for the first term, it's 24 times 1, and my r disappears because r to the power of 0 is 1, right? And for the second term, I'm doing 2 times 2, which gives me negative 4, and my r stays because 2 minus 1 is 1. I end up with r to the power of 1, so it just kind of stays there. So that is my answer for, that is the answer for part b. Now finally, for part c, we're going to find the value of r when the area of the surface of the curved surface is maximized. Okay. Now, whenever we're de dealing with any kind of optimization, whether it's maximized or minimized, you need to think of equaling the derivative of whatever you're doing to equal to zero. Okay. And so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to have zero equals 24 pi minus four pi r. Okay. I'm going to explain why it's equal to zero in a second now, but for um, but for now, I'm just going to solve it, okay? So I want to have r equals something since I need to find the value of r. So I'm going to put plus 4 pi r to both sides. I end up with 4, four pi r equals 24 pi. I'm going to quickly divide by pi just to get it rid on both sides. I end up with 4 r equals 24. I divide by 4, both sides. 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. So my radius equals 6 when I am trying to maximize my surface area. However, be careful, we are not quite done yet. Remember that we are dealing in terms of centimeters, right? And so part of my answer has to be to put centimeters here. So my answer is not just 6, it is 6 centimeters. A good way to remember that this is that, well, first of all, practice, but also all these problems are, I mean, all parts of the problem are asking for two points. So if you can say more than one thing, you're probably going to get the answer. And saying just 6 is not saying two things. Saying 6 centimeters is saying two things. So maybe that's one way that you like to remember it. Nonetheless, um, that is how you do uh, this problem. Okay, now I'm going to explain a little bit why um, putting my derivative equal to zero is what helps to find out whether it's max maximized or minimized or optimized or whatever. So let's remember that this uh, derivative here came from the original function that was like this. It was 24 pi r minus 4 pi r squared, okay? Now, I know this can look a little bit weird, so just because I'm going to be explaining something theoretical, I'm going to turn this into this. I'm going to say that it's y equals um, minus 4x squared plus 24x. Okay, this is just to make it like a little more friendly looking. And so we know that this is going to be a, a quadratic function, right? Just because of the gist of it, that is how it's going to be. 
and we also know that it is facing down because of the negative. And so we know that somewhere in my x, comma y, I'm going to end up with a thing that looks as following. It's going to look probably like this, right? And so let's remember that the derivative, what it's doing is finding like the rate of change, right? And so if I, if I put, for example, dA over dr equals, I don't know, 2, what I'm asking the function is, what value of x do I have when my slope is 2? And so that would probably be, when my slope is 2, it's around here, right? Notice that, the, and my x value here is actually like, it's probably 0, right? And so if I ask it for my value of um, when my rate of change is 0, that is going to be up here at the tippy top, at the maximum, right? Because here, um, the function is not increasing nor decreasing. It, it is at the very top at its maximum. And so here, I know that my x is going to be just around 6, which is the r equals 6 that we found before. And so that is why when dealing with quadratic functions, equaling my derivative to 0 gives you the optimum. Because one way or another, it actually gives you like the vertex, right? And if my function was like this, where's my rate of change zero? Right there, baby. Right there. And that right there is my minimum. And so just keep that in mind of why it works that way. You can always memorize it and just, you know, solve it like a machine. But I think it's important to understand why this works. All right. So if you stayed for the explanation, you're awesome. But that is how you solve this problem. And I hope it helped. Peace.